In this video, we will be discussing the difference between implicit and explicit equations and then doing some basic implicit differentiation. This is the first of several videos where we will be using implicit differentiation. First, let's talk about the differences between implicit and explicit equations. So this is an explicit equation, y equals 12x minus 4. y is written explicitly as a function of x, which, which essentially means that y is isolated all by itself on one side of the equation, and it is solely dependent on x. Whatever we plug in for x is going to influence what we have coming out for y. If we were asked to find the derivative of this equation, we would simply say y prime is equal to 12, because that is the slope of 12x, and the derivative of negative 4 is 0. So y prime would be equal to 12. This is our graph of the explicit equation. This next equation is an implicit equation. 3xy is equal to 12. y is written implicitly as a function of x. It is not isolated on one side of the equation. And if we were asked to find the derivative of 3xy equals 12, being asked to find the derivative of this entire equation, what we would probably try to do is first try to isolate y to get it to look a little bit more like an explicit equation, and then we would use basic differentiation rules. So what I would do is divide both sides by 3x, and then I would get y is equal to 4 over x. And then to find y prime, I would simply apply the quotient rule. And I get y prime is equal to negative 4 over x squared. What about this third equation? y squared plus 7y plus 4x plus 4x cubed equals 8. Well, is this implicit or explicit? That's what we first need to identify. This is an implicit equation because y is written implicitly as a function of x. It's not isolated on one side of the equation. We have y here, y here, and we have x's on the same side of the equation, kind of all mushed together here. So if we were asked to find the derivative of this, if we were going to use the same method that we did up here, we'd first need to isolate y. But that's going to pose a bit of a challenge here because this is an equation where it is either difficult or impossible to isolate y. Like we could, we could try pulling out a y and then we'd have y plus 7. But then even if we were to do some algebraic manipulation, we'd have a really hard time getting y all by itself. And this is what the graph of that equation looks like. It's actually not a function. It's a relation because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. This is a situation where we need to use implicit differentiation. Here are some other examples of implicit equations or relations. Note that I did not say implicit functions here because a lot of these don't pass the vertical line test. We have a variety of shapes here. We have an ellipse, we have a hyperbola. All of these are implicit equations. So how do we find the derivatives of these equations? Because these are not defined explicitly. These are defined implicitly. We need to do what's called implicit differentiation. And these are the steps for implicit differentiation that I will work through with some examples. Example 1 asks us to determine dy over dx at the point 0, 5, and 6, 4, and it gives us this function, x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 100. We're going to need to use implicit differentiation here because y is defined implicitly as a function of x. It's not defined explicitly in this equation. So the first step for implicit differentiation is to take d dx and apply it to both sides. Take the derivative of both sides. This is called the derivative operator. And when we write that on both sides, it just means take the derivative with respect to x of each term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to both sides. I'm going to say d dx of x squared plus 4y squared is equal to d dx of 100. And now I need to go through and take the derivative of each term. So if I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, which is how we normally take it, of x squared, that's going to be 2x. And then when I work with this one, it's going to be 4 times 2y. But there's something else that we need to do whenever you have a y in the term. When you have a y in the term, if you are trying to take d dx, or the derivative with respect to x of y, that's going to be y prime, or dy dx. So whenever you see a y in the term that you're taking the derivative of, you need to multiply it by dy dx. And then we know that the derivative with respect to x of 100 is simply 0. Now what we're going to do is clean this up. I'm going to rewrite it as 2x plus 8y dy dx is equal to 0. And remember that dy dx is what we're actually trying to find. We are trying to find dy dx at these points. So now I'm just going to work to isolate dy dx, and I'm going to treat dy dx like another variable. So I would subtract 2x from both sides, and I get 8y dy dx is equal to negative 2x, and then divide both sides by 8y, which winds up being equal to negative x over 4y. So that is dy dx. And I'm looking for dy dx at 0, 5, and 6, 4. So dy dx 
at 0, 5. In order to find that, I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 5 for y into my equation for dy dx. And I get 0. So at 0, 5, this means that the slope of the tangent line is 0. Now I will find dy dx at the point 6, 4. To denote that you are taking the derivative at a certain point, you just write dy dx at and draw that line and then write the point down below. So now I'm going to plug in 6 for x and 4 for y. And that is equal to negative 6 sixteenths. If I want to, I can simplify it and say it's negative 3 eighths, but it really doesn't matter if I simplify or not if you are on a free response. We can verify these answers by looking at our graph. So our graph was actually this one. This is the graph that we were taking the derivative of. And we, were, we determined that dy dx at 0, 5 at this point is 0. That makes sense. The slope of the tangent line there is 0. And we said at 6, 4, it's going to be negative 3 eighths. So at 6, 4, tangent line would look something like that. Negative 3 eighths seems like a reasonable slope. Find dy dx of the following equation. 6x plus x squared minus y squared minus 6y equals 1. This is another implicit equation, so we will need to use implicit differentiation, which means that our first step is to take the derivative operator and apply it to both sides. So we will write d dx on the outside of both sides to show that we are taking the derivative with respect to x. Now we will start taking the derivative. The derivative of 6x with respect to x is simply 6. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Now, in the following term, we're going to have a y in it, which means that we need to have a dy dx or a y prime stuck onto the end. So first, we take the derivative like normal, so it, just, it would just be negative 2y, but then we need to add on either dy dx or y prime. For this example, I will practice using y prime, so it's negative 2y y prime. And then we have minus 6, which would be our normal derivative, and then we add on the y prime to the end. d dx of 1 is 0. Now we're going to isolate all the terms that have y prime and get them on the left side of the equation while we move the terms that don't have a y prime to the right side. So negative 2y y prime minus 6y prime, those terms will stay on the left side and we will move 6 and 2x to the left. Now we will factor out a y prime from both of these terms because remember our goal is to isolate y prime or dy dx. So now I will factor out y prime. And now I can isolate y prime by dividing both sides by negative 2y minus 6. And now I found that y prime, or dy dx, is equal to negative 2x minus 6 over negative 2y minus 6. One way that you may see this further simplified on the AP exam is that they may factor out a common term from the numerator and denominator. For example, they would say negative 2 parentheses x plus 3 over negative 2 parentheses y plus 3, and then cancel out the negative 2s and say dy dx is equal to x plus 3 over y plus 3. So you may have to simplify it like that if you're on a multiple choice and all of the answer choices are simplified. Find dy dx of the following equation. This looks like another implicit equation, so our first step is to apply the derivative operator, d dx, to both sides. Now we'll take the derivative with respect to x of each term. So for this one, it'll be 6y squared, times either y prime or dy dx. I think I'm going to use dy dx for this example. So 6y squared dy dx plus 2y, and that term has a y in it too, so we will do dy dx, minus 6, another y, so we need dy dx, minus 14x. And since that one's just an x, we don't need to add a dy dx to the end. The derivative of negative 4 with respect to x is 0. Now we will isolate all of the terms that have a dy dx in them so that we can factor it out in the next step. So I'm essentially just moving the 14x to the other side here. And now I will factor out dy dx out of each of these terms. And now I can divide both sides by this. So here is dy dx. And again, keep in mind if you're on the multiple choice and none of your answer choices are matching this, what you may have to do is cancel out common factors from every term. So if I cancel out a 2 from every term, I would get 7x over 3y squared plus y minus 3. And that would be dy dx. Problem 4 asks us to write the equation of the line tangent to this graph at x equals negative 4. And then we need to determine the second derivative of the equation. 
So this looks like an implicit equation, but one of the tricks that you can use on the AP exam is that if it's easy to get into explicit form, it's going to be easier to take the derivative that way, most likely. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to try to isolate y here. I'm going to divide by 3x, and I get y is equal to 4 over x. And I think that's going to be pretty easy to take the derivative of. I'm just going to use the quotient rule. So y prime is equal to low d high minus high d low over the low function squared, which winds up being equal to negative 4 over x squared. And I'm being asked to find the equation of the line tangent of the graph at x equals negative 4. So now I'll find y prime of negative 4. That is negative 1 fourth. So now I have my slope and I just need my point. I have half of my point. I have the x coordinate. So now I'm going to find the y coordinate. I will plug in negative 4 for x and I get y is equal to negative 1. So now I have that m is equal to negative 1 fourth and my point is negative 4, negative 1. So then when I write my equation, it will be y plus 1 is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 4. Now I need to determine the second derivative of the equation. So remember, the second derivative is simply the derivative of the derivative. So I have that y prime is equal to negative 4 over x squared. So I'm just going to look for y double prime. I'm going to take the derivative again. And this will require the quotient rule again. So again, I will do low d high minus high d low over low squared. And it looks like the second derivative is equal to 8 over x cubed. Write the equation of the line tangent to the graph at negative 2, negative 11. And the equation is sine of y is equal to 3x squared plus y. What you might be tempted to do in this one is move the 3x squared to the other side so that you would have y all by itself, and then you would have sine y minus 3x squared is equal to y. And you might say, oh, that's an explicitly defined equation. y is isolated on one side. However, y is not completely isolated because we have another y over here. So this is going to be an equation that we need to use implicit differentiation on. I'm going to cross this one off so I don't get confused. And now I'm going to apply the derivative operator to both sides. Now when I take the derivative with respect to x of sine y, first I'm going to do cosine y, and then I need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the inside function is y prime. This is ultimately a chain rule problem here. And then we take the derivative of 3x squared with respect to x, which is 6x, and the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Actually, I should write y prime here because I already started using y prime. So I'm going to stick with y prime for this problem. Now I need to isolate y prime. What I'm going to do is take away y prime from both sides so that I have cosine y, y prime, and I need to protect my cosine y in parentheses there to show that I'm only taking the cosine of y. I'm not taking the cosine of y prime. So I have cosine of y times y prime minus y prime is equal to 6x. Now I can factor out a y prime from both of these terms. So I would have y prime, open parentheses, cosine of y minus 1 is equal to 6x. And now I can divide both sides by cosine y minus 1. y prime, or dy dx, is equal to 6x over cosine y minus 1. However, this is not what I'm looking for. They're asking me to write the equation of the line tangent to the graph at this point. So I have the point, and I just need the slope. The derivative is going to give me the slope of the tangent line. To find the slope of the tangent line at negative 2, negative 11, I'm going to take dy dx at negative 2, negative 11, and simply plug in negative 2 for x and negative 11 for y into my equation and see what I get. And I get 12.053, and I'm rounding or truncating to three decimal places here. Now I know that m is equal to this, this is my slope, and this is my point. So I will write the equation in point slope form. This is my equation of the tangent line at this point. Find dy dx of the following equation. This is another implicit equation, so I'm going to first start by applying the derivative operator to both sides. Now, when I take the derivative of 2y to the fourth with respect to x, that's going to be 8y cubed y prime. I need to stick on a y prime at the end because it has a y in the term, and I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, not respect to y. And then minus 12y squared y prime plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now I will keep these terms on the left side of the equation and move the other ones to the right. And now I will factor out a y prime 
and I'll be left with 8y cubed minus 12y squared. And then I'll divide both sides by 8y cubed minus 12y squared. Now, something that I may have to do is factor out a 2 from the top and the bottom. And I'd be left with dy dx is equal to negative 2x minus 1 over 4y cubed minus 6y squared. And again, the multiple choice answers will dictate how you simplify. You might not have to if there's an answer choice that's exactly this, but you may have to if you're not seeing anything like this and you are seeing something that is simplified. Be sure to watch my second and third videos on implicit differentiation.